Okay, so I would like to show here what is after my long experience, which you can see on my channel, of making an isometric game engine. I think this is the best approach that I found. So I've gone back to Syndicate from 1994, perhaps this game was from a DOS game that I played on Mac back in the day. And I was able to find a open source library called Lib Syndicate, which reverse engineered all the graphics in this game, which is amazing. It took quite a few weekends to get working, but I was able to extract out tile sets and then to rebuild them from the bottom up using what I believe was this was the method they used after studying some of the rendering and syndicate and some of the some of the draw bugs that they actually have in theirs as well too. So you can see here that what we how this works is that we start from the we start from the floor level and build up rendering from uh, column to row, right? And this is this involves no sorting whatsoever. So this is just a straight drawing, and you can see here that we get effects like this. This is building up the world, right? So they have all the assets in this game are split into levels, and that's that's quite important because um, my original I attempted this was I thought that um, it would be too much work to split the tiles and that was not a that was not going to be a viable solution because of just the, the work involving in splitting assets you know like I looked at this tree and I thought oh I have to split all these trees up in this in this post up here this is gonna to have to be split up and this is just you know this is not a reasonable thing to do so I, I discounted the idea of slicing and building up from the bottom up and instead I ended up with the crazy expensive and complicated, extremely complicated sorting, which was, you know, even well optimized with huge amounts of work. It never worked perfectly. It was very, very fidgety. Everything had to be, had to be precisely within their own frames. And it was, it was an, it was a nightmare. So anyways, going back to syndicate and seeing how this worked, I found that they were, that this is, this was able to run on 1994 hardware. So this was, um, and, and what I had devised on my, this 2015 MacBook was, it was expensive to run. It would have never run it, never gotten anywhere close to running on, you know, on 90s hardware at all whatsoever. So anyways, so what I found here is that um, still the major challenges are that everything, well, first let me say that the way that, the way the sprites work here is that, again, there's no sorting happening except for within these tile regions. So what happens is, is as the uh, as the sprites move, they determine which tile they are a part of, and they render on top of that tile, right? And then if there are multiple um, sprites in one tile, then they'll use a um, a sorting to, to by, by like the the max y position, right? Otherwise, like in these these two characters are are going to be in different tiles here. You can see this guy's in this one. This was in this one. There's no sorting done between these. This guy just draws in front of this guy. This guy draws in front of this guy just by virtue of the fact that it's being drawn on this tile, right? Which is drawn after this one. This is being drawn from column down to row. So, anyways, this is this works, but you of course realize that these tiles are 16 pixels high, right? So this guy, so this guy would, if you were, if you were drawing these spr these sprites in this full size, this guy's head would be chopped off by this top tile, right here. You can see because of the because of the height difference. So what we do then, and I believe Syndicate in 1994 did this as well from from studying their their assets. And I'll show some screenshots later of what I've uh, what I've captured, and I think they were doing this as well. That we actually do split these things, but we can do it dynamically, you know, and w without actually, my, my original thought was that these had to be split in the actual art, right, in the actual graphics files, and that and that's what scared me off the idea. I didn't realize it was going to be, you know, relatively trivial to split these things dynamically like this, you know, and it was even easier back in the 90s on those hardware when you had, like, real direct access to all the pixels, your memory, you know, you didn't have to go back and forth between GPUs and stuff. 
but uh, so yeah, that's what that's what happens here. So you can see that um, this head's not chopped off because the top is drawn actually into the next into the, um, the the layer above it, right? So so this level is drawn like this tile, this tile, this tile, and then this bottom part of the sprite, and then you know, and then you get eventually up to the next level. And here you have this tile drawn, the top of the sprite here, this head, and uh, yeah, and that's how you that's how you avoid that chopping off effect. So, anyways, that is the first um, the first thing that was overcome, which works quite well. So, anyways, what, what we see here is when we the, the the big challenge with these kind of games is that when you ascend up through levels, you have a problem because the way this is is working is that when you get onto the stair level. You're now in between levels, essentially, the sprite is, but you have to be drawn on top of the stairs, right? This is how you can pass between these two boundaries and not have this tile clip his feet because you're actually drawing on the level above, which is this level, right? So what happens here is if you have layers that are occluded, that occlude the stairs, the levels, you can see you get these, these artifacts where his feet's being chopped off right there and in fact here's a here's another example of it that you can see walking up this level right here as soon as you get onto the stairs you have to draw on top of the stairs and this tile is now on the same that the sprite is on the same level as this tile now so he's walking over it and if you will and if you look at the uh, old syndicate this is what happened to them as well too right you can yeah you can see how that works yeah, there it's even more more noticeable so here you're on the first level and then you go up on the stairs and you have to draw over it so you know that's a drawing bug and syndicate just just dealt with it and it gets it gets ugly too when you when you start walking up multiple levels like this and you can see you, the guy phases through the through the top of this level here because it's because he's drawing on this on top of this level right here right which is which is this one and um yeah, and you eventually just pop out over on top of it. It corrects itself once you get into the, into the black, to the last level, right? So, yeah, this is not great. So what I've done here, and this is, they could have done this in 1994, I think, pretty easily. And I, 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 I did a, um, a sorting buffer is what I call it. And this was done all, this is all OpenGL, right? So I have to have frame buffers that we draw into. Half of this of the scene, not half of the scene. Part of the scene is is drawn um, twice, basically. And what it, what I do is I determine which tiles are including slopes, like these stairs, and then I draw these into a into a buffer, which keeps their sorting order into them. The sorting order being uh, the isometric, the tile, the tile order, right? So if this was tile. Uh, well, whatever, that doesn't need to be explained, but the order as, as they appear drawn and just incrementing upwards. So this is what those those colors suggest. And you could not do this. It's, there could be other ways to do this without frame buffers, which are, I don't know if that was the best way to do it or not, but since I'm working on OpenGL, and there's, these things had to be, they were already being rendered through OpenGL, but you could put this into it like a pixel buffer too, I think, and not have to deal with all that complicated graphics library stuff, which is really not that much needed for this purpose. Anyways, though, so you can see this this visualization of it, and I will hide that for now. Or maybe I'll maybe I'll show it right now. So, anyways, what this does is that when I'm walking behind these tiles, and you can see that graphics those glitches are fixed, and that's because we can now, for the for the sprites, the dynamic geometry, right? We use we have to have two shaders here, right? We have a sorting buffer shader, and then one for the uh, dynamic geometry. So what this does here is it it's able to to sample into the sorting buffer and determine that this sorting level layer is uh, this sorting index is higher than the index of this sprite. So we can then just discard in the shader the fragment which is 
which is covered up basically, and it just and it performs a a masking effect. Essentially, is what happens here. So that so, that solved the the remaining other complicated part of the of the problem, which existed, which they were not able to fix in the 90s with their their program. So you can see there that solved that problem as well too. And if we take it off here, it's a little easier to see. So yeah, there we go. That's quite nice. Um, I think that's about the the extent of it. Um, yeah, it performs quite well. It's taking a, a bit of a hit right now, a couple milliseconds of this. You can see up there in the corner the the uh, time per frame. A couple milliseconds of that is the recording software right now that's really spinning up the fan. Otherwise, this uses hardly any CPU. The, the, the downsides of it are that it, it's, um, I don't want to say it's expensive, but it does involve some work to um, when you move the players that determine which tile they're in and, and then split them across the levels, you know, that's, you know, it's still quite small. I haven't actually tested this with huge amounts of sprites. I don't, I, I don't know what would happen in that case, but these kind of games, you're never going to need massive amounts of sprites anyways. That's just, that's not a good fit for these kind of things in the first place. So I had to learn the hard way. Um, particles, again, you can't, the idea of having free floating particles is now a bit of a problem because it is it, it is an annoying kind of challenging thing to have to split everything into levels, right? As you go up, um, I think I actually showed that you can show the split frames. As you go up levels too, this the split frame needs to needs to change accordingly. Otherwise, you would start getting all these crazy clippings. So this this all has to happen every time these sprites move, which is kind of a difficult thing to do. And if you were doing this with particles, that'd be a problem. I think you'd make the particles just a single uh, sortable entity in a sense and kind of attach it to one of the tiles like just one of these sp sprites is done and then have all the particles uh, draw within that context as opposed to just you know injecting thousands of little particles into the system where it needs to distribute them across levels and split the uh, split the uh, textures as they draw and such so yeah we don't want to be doing that but um yeah, I, I would post the. I'm gonna pull this out into a into an engine. I already have, and I'm I'm going to uh, then hopefully get to put this up on GitHub at some point. I would release, of course, these graphics because it took me quite a bit of time to pull these tiles out, and they were really helpful for 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 uh, learning about the art of what is making these isometric engines now. It's quite challenging, and it's an art form, in my opinion. And uh, it was just fun to work with. It made the whole thing fun and inspiring. So I'd like to show these, but of course I don't own them. I, I, I don't. I think EA bought Bullfrog, which is the company who made Syndicate. So that's um, yeah, it's out of the question. And you're probably going to have to use the Lib Syndicate yourself. And it had bugs in it. It had to be upgraded to SDL2, and it was finicky. You know, I guess every person's going to have to go through that themselves. But um, yeah, let's zoom this out really quick just to. Uh, Show what that looks like, just because that's cool. If you ever looked at the old, uh, the old Syndicate games, you know, and wonder what the maps look like if you could zoom out. It's all pretty cool. And this is starting to tax. That's yeah, starting to hurt the CPU. That's the recording software. It's really taxing this old little MacBook. But these are screenshots from the original Syndicate DOS game that I took. You can see here. This was this was that map that I was testing in in my engine with a different. Um, a different palette. I use a darker palette in in my engine just for testing. But you can see here. Here is the guy being clipped by the uh, by the top of that level. Right, he's he's on this uh, on this uh, ramp right here. He's getting he's clipping through into the next level and getting chopped off because I believe his uh, because this is a proof. I believe that they were as well clipping the sprites in half to prevent some of those those clipping bugs. You can see here this guy is on a on a ramp, and the bottom half is being drawn onto this layer and getting and covering it up. Here's another one right there to show the problem, and this one. Whoops. Yeah, this 
that one, we go, this guy, same thing over the ramps, this is, this is the one problem, that the tiles which are, which are occluding ramps, that's what gets you, this I don't know exactly why, that's probably not the area he should have been walking, it seems like he walked onto a tile he shouldn't have been able to, but uh, yeah, so that's the situation, that's my advice after quite a few painful experiences and that's what I'm going to be doing going forward and at some point I'll, I'll get this up in GitHub and make a some Pascal so hopefully it'll be understandable but it will be I think a, a benchmark for what is a good baseline for an isometric engine so we don't have to all be fighting this stuff in the future.